Hello and welcome. This is Dan Havey from Solver. Thank you for joining uh, as we continue our series on enabling world-class decisions for banks and credit unions. Today we'll be talking about simplifying CECL. First of all, what does CECL mean? Financial Accounting Standards Board says that the final current expected credit loss, so that's, the, uh, that's where we get the word CECL, uh, uh, was issued back in June of 2016. And it's in response to the financial crisis uh, in the 2007-2008. Uh, and what they wanted to do is they wanted banks to go back and look at how they approached allowance for loan and lo lease losses. The current approach to allowance for loan and lease losses essentially would look at each loan type, lease type, look at the historical charge-off rate, and then to provide a reserve, they would just simply say how long is that loan or that portfolio going to be on the books and they would just take the charge off rate times the, the, the life of that portfolio, the average life of the portfolio to come up with a reserve. So if we'll look at the lease uh, on the right here, if we say, all right, we're averaging an annualized charge off rate of 0.21% for leases and the leases on average have a life of three years, then I'm going to set up a reserve of 0.63%. If I go all the way to the very bottom, I take all my loans and leases. Average charge off for everything was about 4.47%. Uh, and the total average of all my loans blended together is about 4.3 years. I get a reserve of about 2.02%. Under CECL regulations, banks are now going to need to do it at the loan level not the portfolio level, at the loan level. And in order to do that, they're going to need to predict if this loan is going to go bad over the life of the loan. So that brings into predictive analytics. And if you look at the picture on the right here, the way predictive analytics work is the more pieces, the more factors you take into account, the better the predictive model. So I may have delinquency rate. I may have interest rate. I may have the term of the specific loan. I may have the FICO score of the customer, loan to value, collateral value. So more and more predictive data points I have, the better predictive model is going to come up with to say this specific loan is likely to charge off, and then I'll know how to put up a reserve for that specific loan. So this uh, change in approach to uh, calculating the loan and lease loss reserve is huge. Uh, a lot of articles, you've seen it over and over again. Here's a headline here, incurred loss versus expected loss, CECL, in other words. It's the biggest change ever to a bank account. Where have we heard this? It's the biggest thing happening uh, to the IT world. Well, you know, we sort of chuckle at Y2K. Uh, you know, the world was going to come to an end and hire mass amounts of consultants, spent a ton of money to get all our systems ready. Five million dollars. Five million. Uh, for Y2K. And it's sort of the same response we're getting today. You're getting all these consultants coming out of the woodwork and say, we're here to help you come up with predictive models to, to, to solve this Cecil mess that you're in. I'm afraid I'm going to have to pull rank on you. I didn't want to have to do this. I'm with the mattress, please. There are no tags on these mattresses. But here's something uh, that statistics will bear out, uh, and this uh, applies to predictive models as well. The classic bell curve says that after a couple of factors, the incremental lift in confidence diminishes. What does that mean? So let's take each one of these pillars, and let's say there's factors. And so in this model here, I've got eight factors. And my two best predictors are right there dead center. Uh, they will predict, on average, 68% of the time, the right reserve or the right charge-off ratio. If I go out and add two more factors, I'm going to add 28% lift to my predictive model. If I add two more factors, I'm only going to add a 4% lift and add two more factors, I'm going to add 0.2%. So the goal here is you want to find the two, three, four factors. It's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Now, 
you hire consultants and they're going to give you eight factors, nine factors, ten factors. You're going to pay a lot of money for that uh, analysis to come up with a really good predictive model. But all at the end of the day, all you're really going to need is one, two, three factors, four factors at the most, and you're going to get the biggest bang for the buck. So here's a picture of linear regression. Here where we've got a couple of factors. So my red dots is the actual losses experience based on a couple of factors. Essentially, you're going to have a scatter diagram of historical charge-offs over time based on two factors. And we're going for, let's say, a 68% confidence level according to our bell curve. So you're going to have your actuals all over the place, but if you blur your eyes, this blue line is going to be the trend line. So this is what linear regression does, is it looks at the actuals over time and comes up with a line that best fits uh, the actual experience. If you'll go to all these consultants, listen to all these webinars, read all the research, they're going to tell you that the two best predictors uh, of a loan going bad is the loan to value, and on the right is FICO score, or it could be a risk rating that you're credit union or bank comes up with. So these two factors are going to be your best bet to coming up with a 68% confidence of predicting that that specific note is going to go, uh, going to be charged off. So here's a looking at a bank. Uh, it's a rather large bank. And what it's doing is it's looking at all loans combined, so it's not taking into account whether it's a mortgage loan, a credit card, a commercial loan, or a lease. Uh, that type of stuff. And it's just looking at charge-offs for the last 12 months. If you got charge-offs for the last five years, even better. And so we got our FICO ranges on the left, our loan-to-value ranges on the right. So this is your actual observed. These are the associated loan balances. And so these are the actual charge-off rates. My total, my whole batch, is 40 basis points. That's observed. So the next step is, how do I do a reserve? You know, if I have this type of pattern of charge-offs, what am I do for a reserve? So what you're going to do is you're going to come up with that linear regression that we talked about. What's the best fit? That's my actual. But what I want to do is come up with something that looks like this, where I've got my actuals all over the place, but I want a best fit line, something that smooths it out. Uh, and that's the whole goal here. When I apply those charge-off factors and I apply it to the weighted average balances, this is the loan loss reserve that I come up with, 175. So here I'm looking at home uh, equity loans only in this specific case. And my average charge-offs for my home equities is, let's say, 10 basis points. And on average, those home equity loans uh, are out there for seven years. So my overall portfolio is going to be 71 basis points. If you look down below, my customer profitability, they have a home equity loan, an installment loan, and retail CDs. If you look at my CECL calculation on the lower right, I'll take my home equity or my CCL tax advantage uh, loan, and it's got a term of 84 months. Uh, that's the, you know, the shelf life, or, or seven years, if you will. I'm going to take my ending balance, so this particular loan's got an 18000 ending balance, the value, the collateral at the time they originated, that's the best I, I've got right now. I may periodically update the value, but right now it's 287. Uh, so I have a loan value of 63%. So that's going to fall on my fourth column. If you look up above my loan loss reserve, it's going to be in the fourth column. And then the last time they applied for a credit at the bank, uh, they had a FICO score of 574. So I just simply attached that FICO score to Russell Johnson here. So every loan has the same FICO score. His household has that same FICO score. So that shows up on my last row. And so the intersect is 93 basis points, a little bit less than 1%. So I'm going to apply that 93 basis points against that home equity loan of 18,000. I'm going to set up a reserve of 168 for that specific loan. Here we're looking at my portfolio as a whole for my home equity loans. And if you look at my average balances over time, $31 million over time, based on the CECL 
loan loss reserve where I go in note by note and apply these rates to all the various notes. Some of them have FICO scores here and loan to values here, so all that. So I'm cross multiplying every single note, but at the end of the day, my portfolio is coming back to 71 basis points. And that's what we see in this model, uh, this uh, profitability report. These are my balances over time. Here's my reserve each and every month. Some people's uh, loan to values are changing based on pay downs, payoffs, whatever. Some people reapply for another loan and their FICO score changed. So I'm just revaluing the, the reserve for every single note. But on average, it's still about 70 basis points over time. And then you can see my charge offs over time. And then I've got uh, some diagnostics on loan production. So I still, at the end of the day, come up with 70 basis points for my loan portfolio. But if I open up every single note, every single loan in this portfolio, they're all going to have different rates based on the grid. So here I am in a tool called BI360 that helped me do all this type of analysis. And uh, what BI360 is, is, is it's a tool that's going to take data from all your disparate systems, loans, deposits, general ledger, credit cards, interchange, you name it, loads it into a SQL Server data warehouse, and then allows you to use Excel to drag and drop fields into an Excel report to do your analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and run this report just so we don't see all the, uh, uh, the various parameters. And I'm going to pick, uh, like I was saying, a home equity loan. So I'll say OK. Go ahead and run it. And you'll see uh, my actual charge-offs uh, are sort of weighted over here where the, it's a higher loan to value. And I guess intuitively that makes sense. Uh, a home equity loan, you know, is supposed to pay down over time. But folks, that uh, it's just a stubborn balance. Uh, they just can't pay it off. has a higher loan to value. So that would make sense. And then we've got uh, a couple other hits that have low uh, FICO scores. And that, again, that intuitively makes sense. Low FICO score, there's risk. High loan to value, there's risk. But, you know, a lot of empty space here. Here's the average balances for the last uh, 12 months. And then these are my actual charge-off rates. Uh, so I do that for home equity loans. Then let's say I come into commercial, do the same thing, run this. And, uh, and then I've got a different uh, scattering of actuals, if you will, based on commercial loans. So I do that for each one of them, and I, and I see certain patterns. But if you'll notice, if I do all my loans, and go ahead and rerun this, now I'm going to fill in this grid. I'm going to get much more uh, richer information and pattern because... I'm looking at FICO scores and I'm looking at loan to values or loan to credit limit uh, you know, or you know, some type of barometer where it's a based on the loan and here it's based on the borrower. So I'm coming up with a much, much richer grid. Now the nice thing about this BI360 tool is uh, every cell is drillable. So if I want to go in and really interrogate the data and uh, you know, look at the you know, my product code, uh, and do, you know, these are my various product codes, you can do all sorts of what-if analysis. So again, the drill down is really, really helpful. Uh, once I've done that, the, you know, this is sort of my, my reserve for all average loans. Then I'm going to apply this grid to my commercial loans that have an average shelf life of five years, to my, uh, uh, my uh, home equity loans. And so I'm just going to come up with individual loan loss reserves based on their charge-off pattern. So let's go back to my home equity. I'm going to go ahead and rerun this. And I've got my overall pattern, but this is my actual experience for home equity, 0.09. So I'm going to multiply that out by the seven years, and I'm going to come up with 0.72 or 71 uh, to be exact and such. So I'm going to take the pattern for my overall loan portfolio, my reserve pattern, and apply it specifically to my home equity loans. So that way if a note falls into 63% loan to value and a 575 FICO score, that specific note is going to get a 93 basis point reserve. 
Let's go back to our customer profitability model where I had a table here and just simply dragged and dropped various fields into my report here, all sorts of information based on the customer. And then when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and run that report. And I'll go ahead and pick out a customer. Let's Russell Johnson, hit OK, run it. Now let me just scoot over here to my Cecil data. And so here we are, Russell Johnson's uh, home equity loan. Um, theirs is a ending balance for the loan. That was the original amount or the credit limit. You know, it was compared to something, the collateral value. So loan to value is 63%. FICO score is 575. And there we are, reserve rate of 93 basis points, $168. Now let's switch over to our product profitability uh, report. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Same thing, I've dragged and dropped all sorts of fields into my report based on the tables. And here's all loans. I'm just simply going to go back to my home equity loans, run that report. It's going to hit the data warehouse, pull in all my data elements. Here's my portfolio balance, my loan loss reserve, uh, note by note. So let's go in there and let's drill down. Let's see how it, it shaked out, if you will. So I'm gonna. So these are all my home equity loan. It's the single product code. These are my reserve amounts. These are all my various loan to values. These are all my different FICO scores, and here's my reserve rates. And you can see it's scattered all over the place, based on where that note landed in my grid. So the one we were looking at had a, a score of 93 basis points. So what I'm going to do is isolate just the 93 basis pointers. And then I'm going to go to my FICO scores, and there's my range. They're all between 550 and 625. So that you know fits in nicely with the range. So you're going to apply that note by note, satisfy your CISO requirements, but at the end of the day, you're still going to come back to the right answer. You're just simply coming up with a best fit based on two factors, give you a 68% confidence level that at that specific note, that's the proper reserve. Still going to come back to the same answer. It's just now you've come up with a couple of factors, note by note, that does a better job predicting. Well, I hope you found this uh, helpful. And uh, uh, There's my contact information. Love to hear your thoughts, feedback, comments. Uh, this is Dan Havey signing off from Solver, and I hope you have a great day.